We are calling this meeting to order for the Airport Commission. Roll call. Larry Clemens. Here. Chris Crawley. Here. Adam Gizapian. Here. Tim Green. Here. Bill Kutsky. Sure. Dennis Nockreiner. Here. David Tesh. Here. And I am here. Next on the agenda is public comment. We have one person who submitted the form, appearance form, and that is Brian Becker. Please state your name and your address. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Becker, and I live on in Portage, or outside of Portage, actually, in Caledonia Township, on N5661 Thunderbird Road, Portage, Wisconsin, 53901. And uh, the reason I wanted to come here and speak today is because I... I know you guys have a lot on your plate with all this stuff with the airport going on and it got me interested in looking up you know, what is a commission and what's a committee and what does this stuff mean and it kind of kind of triggered my interest and i i think that maybe this commission has been kind of treated been treated a little bit like a committee and not like a commission from what i've researched with so one of the things i want I, I came across is that this commission was created by an ordinance uh you know by the city council giving you your power and and commissions are a bit different they're nuanced from a committee committees just advise the commissions have a purpose an action that they have to act on and i just wanted to read to you guys what this what i found in section 2-202 of the city ordinance it gives you the membership and there was an amendment about letting them you know more of you guys be on here and everything that's cool but the powers and duties really jumped off the page at me. And the first one on the, it says organ number one for the commission's duties was organize and take charge of all affairs necessary in the management and operation of an airport for the city. So take charge, not advise, take charge. So that's kind of important. Um, uh, two is uh, prepare and present to the council a budget for necessary expenditures for such management and operations. So, I, would, I wonder, I don't know if you guys create a budget or not. I, I, I think maybe not. Do you actually create the budget and they just abide by it? Or, you know, I'm just curious. Okay, and then the next one is make recommendations to the Common Council regarding any and all affairs pertaining to aeronautics. But number four was authorize any and all expenditures within the budget set up for, by such commission for the, for, with the Common Council necessary for maintenance and well-being of aeronautics. Then it had a thing on there about not letting you spend over five grand because they want to keep the little guys hands cuffed a little bit, but I really wanted to say, I wanna encourage you guys to take control of what it is that, that you're, you're tasked with doing and not just be a, a committee, but take charge of that actual action of what you're, you're commissioned to do. So that's all I got to say. And I hope you, I wish you all luck on your newfound adventure of uh, making this airport function in the future. Good luck. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes from July 19th. Tim? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from July 19th. Chris? Second that. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Any other questions or comments? Minutes are approved. You got to vote call the roll. Uh, yes, yeah, so the role would be for Chris. Aye. Adam. Aye. Tim. Aye. Bill. Aye. Dennis. Aye. David. Aye. I vote aye. Larry. Aye. Motion carried. Next is the staff report. Excuse me. Discussion and possible number four. Discussion and possible action on fuel supply. So before we kind of turn this over, um, it was uh, requested that this item be discussed with possible action uh, as the airport manager's local supplier no longer will be providing low lead 100 uh, fuel for delivery uh, to the Portage Airport. Uh, as you may know, as part of the current airport manager contract agreement, uh, the manager is to offer both uh, AV gas or low lead 100 as well as swift fuel in the associated thousand gallon tanks at the airport. Um, we would like to discuss options for potential temporary modification to this agreement to be advantageous to both the airport manager and pilot community. 
Um, some thoughts have been kicked around to include partnering with uh, area airports to uh, have those deliveries kind of coincide with one another, uh, as well as to allow for um, that AV gas to be placed in both tanks um, to obviously have, you know, 2,000 gallons available, 1,600 um, for their delivery, which would allow for more deliveries to come more frequently. Um, so included in the packet uh, is the current airport manager contract, which you'll see um, indicates in section 19, the additional coven covenant subpart D, uh, which outlines the agreements in place uh, that spells out the two types of fuels that would be um, needed to be offered. Um, I also wanna note that fuel revenues are retained by the manager other than 1.5%, which is retained by the city. Um, so it's kind of similar to those Hainer uh, lease requirements. Uh, we've given obviously the current airport manager uh, the option to sell that fuel at uh, you know, cost he determines is gonna be advantageous for, for him and the city. Um, so yeah, just wanna get everybody's thoughts and a plan to move forward with that. Yeah. So currently, if I remember right, um, Eric, the low lead 100 is the one that's most used or the least used one? That's the most used at this point. And I guess I, my opinion would be just to put both put it in both tanks if that's the one that's used the most. Um, I don't know what the advantage to the other one is. I'm not a pilot, so I don't know all the advantage of it. Adam. Do you know how many gallons of each you've sold this year? As of the end of August, I haven't done September yet, but um, 6,305.75 full lead 100 and 1,077.31. 6,300 and 1,000, so 1,100. Yeah. Bill. Have there been any changes in that? I mean, you've been a manager for a couple of years, so is it, uh, are we moving in one direction or the other? Not at this point, but eventually they're going to be trying to get away from low lead in, in all the fuels. So that's just a, on the road. David. Uh, they're looking within five years to get a fuel with all the candy, or suppose we'll have 100. Adam. So we're not talking about any capital investment here. We're just talking about changing short-term decision to keep things operational. Have you looked at, uh, have you looked into the cost to get under low lead moving forward? You know if we're gonna be able to get 100 low lead moving forward. It's gonna be difficult because they don't drop ship 500 gallons without a delivery fee. Approximately, Crawford used to charge me $200 a special order and i imagine that they're going to have a delivery fee of at least 200 bucks if they're coming with a semi to drop only 500 gallons so that was that was when they dropped a couple hundred gallons and they pulled out of uh flint hills out of mcfarland that were they Where Crawford was he pulled out of flint hills out of mcfarland i believe um, maybe might not have been flint hills philip 66 is the only one that handles 100 low, the lead so now that product is coming out of indiana it's the only place that's the closest terminal. Minneapolis is done with it. Chicago's done with it. Can't get it out of. Chicago, the guy came and talked to me about it and said he, we could still get it from Chicago. Yeah, I okay. actually heard that also. Okay, so the, Chicago and Indiana, if you look where Chicago is. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so it kind of bleeds over into Indiana. Um, so, right. So it's going to come out of Indiana. If you're, my understanding is, you can't get it you can get it however you want you're going to pay the freight so if we don't partner with somebody on the 100 low lead we're going to pay the whole freight coming out of indiana right is that the general consensus so we have to either decide if we're going to have 100 low lead or not and if we're going to have it if we think it's important and i think 6300 to 1100 um and i'm going to imagine that 6300 could be a almost a thousand gallons more 
if things were just a little different. Um, so you're talking about seven or eight to one. Um, what do you think the impact would be if we lost the 100 low lead? Do you think everybody would just go to the Swift? You can get an STC for your aircraft uh, for approximately 100 to $200. You can get what they call an STC, which allows you to use the 94. I can get one for mine. I, I don't. I don't know. There are certain aircrafts that can do that. Right. There are some. So I guess that that's the concern that we would have is if we if we decided to keep a blend of Swift in one tank, hundred low lead in the other. That hundred low lead, if we pay the whole freight, we're going to be looking at. Might as well not have it. It'll be eleven, twelve dollars is the cost that I was looking at per gallon almost double well more than double um so we might as well not have it if we're going to keep it you know if we're going to special order our own 100 low lead there's not too many local companies that are going to supply us with gas because we're a competitor of theirs any any local madison dells anybody like that they buy the work local competitor to them. So they're gonna want their margin, which is gonna make it cost prohibitive to do that. This is what, my, what I've researched. So I've went out to find places to buy it. Um, to, so we could partner with somebody who we're not competing with locally and still get a good price on the 100 low lead if we wanna keep 100 low lead. For me personally, I could, I run 100 low lead a lot. That's all I run, but I can get it other places. I don't need it on the field to stay operational here. But I think, the numbers speak for themselves. Tim, if, if everybody's using it already and they're getting a tanker in to, to get it, couldn't we partner with them to, you know, they drop it off at their facility and then come over to us instead of? I'm going to answer that, at least with what I've been told. Uh, they have tanks large enough that they don't need to partner with okay. somebody like us. So they can take a whole load. Reedsburg, on the other hand, may not. Um, I do know, because I, I did a little research since our last meeting, I flew up to Watoma. Watoma is partnering with some of their closer airports, like Wapaka. Um, and so they are doing that. And they are getting their fuel from Chicago. He specifically told me Chicago. So, and I'm not making a horse apiece between Chicago and Indiana. But what I'm wondering about, and I think uh, Adam's premise about competitors, that may be somewhat true, um, but I'm not sure that Reedsburg is necessarily a competitor. I don't know if we could partner with them or some of the other airports around the area. That would, that would be something I would like to see more information on. So, so between Watoma and Wapaka, they, they can take a whole truck themselves? Um, I think they have like three or more airports. Oh, okay. So they already no, have no. enough partners. But they have a bigger tank than we do. We have small, we, that's really the issue. We have small tanks. And so that's why we're scrambling. We're looking for somebody that can fill our small tanks, but we're not obligated to a whole load. That's the issue. How much time do we have before where the supplies cut off? How much how much more fuel are we going to have before we're out of 100 low lead? So I fill up my plane a couple times. Right. So this isn't... It, yeah, so you, you want to research Reedsburg. Well, I think, I think we need to have two answers myself. I think we need to have a short-term now answer, and I think we need to have an ongoing look at what's going to be the long-range best for us. So I think the short-term answer would be the answer that we would have until we have a better answer, right? Sounds, sounds good. Okay. Chris. Remember, more than yesterday that we were discussing about moving those fuel islands anyways. Yes. What would it take to get bigger tanks and move them sooner than later? You, you are on the right track, but it takes a, a few steps. We need to get, um, we, we actually petitioned DOA in, I want to say, May or April. Um, to look into that. So we need to get TKDA, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, and to, to make the modifications on the ALP. And if, then if I may, Barry, um, so 
you're you're absolutely correct. Uh, relocating the fuel facility and upgrading the fuel facility is part of the ALP. Um, obviously, we're still waiting on uh, formal response on that approval. It's actually going to come up as part of my staff report later tonight. Um, that's a step in this process. Additionally, um, a step in that process would be to petition for that. We already included that in our petition package. Um, however, that's predicated on that. So we do need to go in that direction. We can't do it like that. Jim. I just got a quick one. Um, so our, our tanks are 500, 500 or 1,000. 1,000 gallons. Yeah. Okay. 800, 800 is usable of that 1,000. Okay. And then to get a tanker, how much is a tanker? 8,000 gallons. Okay. That's all I have right now. David. You're flying around since you do a lot of flying business. Have you come across any airports that have shown any interest in brought it up? Yeah, so I did talk to, okay. I did talk to Shano Airport. It's a place I frequent. They have an 8,000 gallon tank. So they can't take a full tanker load. Uh, when they get down close to the bottom, they can't take a full tanker load and they're pulling out of Chicago, um, <laughs> wherever. They're pulling out of- Somewhere down there. Somewhere down there, right? Um, and so what they said is, if they're gonna, they take a partial load now. They take 6,800 gallons or 6,400 gallons. We could piggyback that on. We'd have some out of route miles off of 41, back to 41, and back up to do that. Jet Air out of Green Bay would do the same thing. Um, so they're not competitors with us. So they have, they wouldn't care. They would rather have us help them get the volume. They would win and they're not going to lose any margin as opposed to WISAV or Bill up at, up at Baraboo Dells. So that was the that was the best option I came up with because we would only really have out of route miles. The problem that we would have is we would still have all of the outer route miles, whether we get 400 gallons on a single tank or 800 gallons on both tanks. Or it depends on how low you want to run the tanks every time. But it would it would essentially the freight cost would be half if we use both tanks. Eric. Did they say how many gallons they used a month? Uh, so they already, they already partner with the jet air. They get two two loads a week or two loads a month typically. So we could we'd have every two weeks we could kind of take our kick at the can. That's, that's key right there because most of the time with like my Swift, everybody's got different sized tanks and they only come up when they come up when they have a load and trying to wait because I'm out and the other guy doesn't is not out. You know, they don't come for me because I got the smallest tank. That's all I'm saying is I, I would want to make sure they come in two weeks would be great. Other thoughts, comments? Adam. So you have 6,300 gallons of 100 low lead and 1,100 gallons of 94 Swift. If you went to all 94 Swift, how many of those 6,300 gallons do you think would go to 94 Swift? Not very many. Okay, so if you went from this breakup, how, and you went to all 100 low lead, how many of those 1,100 gallons of 94 Swift would go to 100 low lead? Probably not many. Okay. There's not many, the experimental ones like the Swift or MoGas, just runs better in their engines, they tell me. That's what they like to burn. So it's a lot of the experimental guys and guys with Rotax engines, things like that. But most all the other airplanes are there. Dennis. Would we sell more of that low lead if we had capacity to sell more? Probably not at this point. I don't know if they would market it better or something like that. Or if everybody got an STC for it, then you would sell more. What are you thinking, Dennis? Just to have Lola, get rid of the Swift. Well, and, but, you know, that we're going to sell, we've sold 1,100, so say we're going to sell 2,000 gallons because we've gone through EAA already. You know, we're going to sell 2,000 gallons this year. <clears throat> if we can pick up that 2,000 gallons by selling Lola, 
not have Swift anymore, be done with it, and just have both of our tanks have low lead would give us the capacity to buy more. But if we're going to have to partner with, say, Shano, maybe it isn't going to be a, an issue, other than the fact is <clears throat> if we don't have to have them stop here as often, we have less transport costs. Now, I know more about fuel tonight than I've ever thought I needed to know. <laughs> so I, these are just a question that come to my mind while you guys were talking. So I have no idea what SWIFT is and what low lead 100 is or any of that. I'm just saying that it seems that we don't sell that much SWIFT. What happens if we just get rid of it? Do we pick it up somewhat in, on the low In lead? brief, it burns cleaner and it's better for the engine. Phil. What does? SWIFT. It Apparently did. nobody cares about that. Not enough. Not <laughs> enough anyway. It's, it's new enough, it's not being utilized enough. But it's, as David said, it's a part of the future. It's, new, it's the distribution system they have. I went to the webinar with the CEO of SWIFT. If you look at a map, they've concentrated on Midwest, Wisconsin, whatever. If you start going west of Minnesota, there's a dot in Nebraska. They only have three places in California that sell it. It's more popular here. It supposedly lets your engine go farther in between oil changes. Pull your plugs out at every annual, they'll be cleaner. It's <clears throat> a cleaner burning fuel. That's the key. Just like Eric said, it's a distribution system. It's terrible. You can't get it when you know when you want it. You got a plan so far ahead, and it's just uh, you're talking that low lead one. Oh, no, Swift. Swift. no Swift. No Swift. And, you know, we come and then you come into our flying, and everybody who flies in, the biggest thing is they fly in from outside of Wisconsin. They text us all over the country. Like, what's that? First thing they're going to ask you. Nobody knows unless they actually read their magazines or watch webinars. A lot of people don't know because it is not. Not spreading like a web across the country. They say they will, but they've had four or five years to do it. Bill. Yeah, and I just wanted to kind of piggyback on what Dennis was saying, um, and from what we're hearing tonight, if Shano is getting sixty-eight hundred gallons and it's an eight thousand for sure a load, obviously if we could take sixteen hundred, they're not going to run their things completely dry. Um, it might offer even more of a what they want to do. 1,600 gallon, 1600 gallon tank space available rather than. Tim. And, and just my thoughts on think of it, because like Dan said, I, I knew a little bit about this fuel before by talking to Eric a couple weeks ago but I don't know nothing about fuel. <laughs> um, from what it sounds like, my opinion, um, we'd be probably better off to just do the two tanks in low lead 100, and then maybe bring the Swift back when we redo the, the fuel islands. Um, that way we can cut some of the distribution costs and then you know, tell those, tell those pilots, we will bring it back. We just, when we get this fuel island, maybe next year. Yes. The EAA week or two weeks is period that it is. Is that when we sell the most of our Swift and the LL one hundred? Yes, both. Both. Yeah. We sold. So I mean, in, why couldn't we in July we sold five hundred twenty six point seven two gallons of Swift. Swift, half of it in one month. Exactly. So can we? Is there something we got to do with the tanks if? Today we got 100 in it. We empty that tank, you know, down to what we can, and then tomorrow we put Swift in it. Do you, or do you have to do something in the interim? We're going to defer to somebody smarter, Adam. I, I think you could run it dry, and then there'd be negligible what you have in there. The problem that you would have is if you wanted to go to both fuels for just EAA week, you're going to have at best 800 gallons of 100 low lead, and when you're out after six hours of the first Saturday, you probably won't get a truckload for the duration of, because no one's gonna, no one's gonna come back and drop that. The other thing is, Swift is about two dollars a gallon more, and you said the distribution is awful now. As hundred, no, Dave Tesh said that they 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 fail distribution now with hundred low lead getting harder to get. Their distribution is probably going to get over overworked. And it's going to get even worse. So if we try to rely on just one fuel and that fuel is swift, 
I think we're going to, we're, I think we're, we're asking for problems if we try to keep Swift as our anchor. Well, it would seem that if we were going to go to one field, it would be the, the 100 low leg. I don't think anybody's going to, if, if, if we try to buy four or five, 600 gallons of 100 low lead in that one tank without planning and strategizing, our fuel is going to be so expensive, it's going to sit there and everybody's going to go to Dell's and everywhere else and they're not going to come into Portage. I, I, I know a lot of people that fly here, and I know Barry's asked this question, and everybody's basically said we need to keep Swift. But those people don't buy Swift here. They buy Swift at the Rio Flying Club. And I, I, nothing against the people at the Rio Flying Club, and I apologize to them now, but it's not what's in the best interest of the airport. For my impression, I think Tim is on to what is probably the right solution. I think that we need to consider converting to 100 low lead in both tanks for now. And we can review that decision at the appropriate time. And it might be when we switch to fuel farm. Um, I do think that David is also right that SWIFT is the future. So it's, I see two answers to this. I see a now answer and I see a later answer, if that makes sense to anybody. Larry. Um, just a farmer in me coming out. What about, um, maybe maybe you can't pump it over, a nurse tank, where you can put a 1,000 gallon, 800 gallon or 1,000 gallon tank on a trailer and just, when we get them, fill it, push it off to the side, and when we get low, we don't have to, that would give us our capacity. I would like to hear from others on that. I've thought of that too, but I, I haven't gotten a good answer on that. What, what it would be as far as logistics, as far as pumping from one day. Who's going to take responsibility for the liability of that spill? Because right now the tanks are fixed in a double containment. Yeah. You know, they're, they got crash protection. If you, have a if you have a nurse tank, and I know on a farm it's great, you just dig a hole and you light it on fire and you clean it up that way. But if you have that problem <laughs> in the city, I'm being serious, if you have that problem yeah. in the city, it's going to cost somebody a lot of money. Yeah, our... Our emergency operation plan would significantly change. Um, I, I apologize. I, I don't know what would go into that process, um, but it would be substantial. Back to a wellhead. It's very true. Good point. Back to our city well. Yeah. But it's funny, this exact conversation happened. Park Falls and Phillips. I mean, everything you've said three years ago. Park Falls had a 2,000 gallon tank, Phillips had an 8,000 gallon tank. Price was way too high in Park Falls. They just split a load. If in two weeks when they came up to Phillips, they didn't need it, they ate the cost. And if they Park Falls needed it, they split it. So I guess we just have to find another airport to split the cost. I don't know what else the answer is. And I think instead of capital investments in a nurse tank, and I mean I we all thought about that. So it's not a bad idea. But I think we we put that money into, you know, ninety five percent match capital investments that get us our best value instead of something that may or may not really yeah. return they're going to make us if we put in an, another tank for that reason they're going to make us do exactly what the mother tanks are <clears throat> DNR. yeah it'd be better it would be a better system this ain't going to be an easy process and it ain't going to be a cheap process to do that or or quick you know and because number one we can't expose our city with it that close to our city well i mean they're just i, I just see red flags all over that yeah i will have the appropriate spill containment yeah, Chris. we're better off to take and just buy bigger tanks. Yeah, um, the tanks. Let's take really get rid of the tanks we got and just buy bigger tanks. But let's get them. Let's get the federal money and the state money. Let's not burden the, yeah, the right. local taxpayer right. with that yeah. cost. Go ahead, Chris. The um the Swift fuel. You were saying they're smaller engine planes, right? Typically, but not always. They run. Can you get that off? Will they run on just premium on lead pump? Yes. Ninety one off. I had that in there until I was told to put back the Swift. And that was $2 cheaper per gallon as well. So if we switch both over to the 100 low lead, I mean, it is possible for the for, for the pilots to get fuel still. What you're going to have in that case, if you get rid of the Swift, you're going to have hangar guys taking cans of fuel, bringing them to their hangar because they're going to get them downtown. They're going to go to Sauk has 90 or the Swift. 
rio and then they'll bring the cans home and put them in their hangar which is not uh, allowed under the they already do that now because rio is cheaper than portage so they already go to rio and get it and bring it over it's the truth yeah but they're storing fuel in which is a breach of their contract so the question in my mind is how quick can we drain down the swift how would that possibly work if if that was the decision I probably got in Swift because we don't sell a lot over the winter. Probably four months. <laughs> okay. Maybe if you sold a lot of it. Okay. So we'd have to keep that other tank replenished very quickly, every two weeks or whatever. You know, if we were to partner with Shano, we have to keep our hundred low lead up until we can deplete the Swift. Just let it run dry because you're going to spend so much on that hundred low lead on the freight on a couple hundred gallons. You're never going to sell it. So just unless you want to take a loss on it. So there's going to be a, a point when we're not going to be able to have a hundred low lead until the Swift sells. And then like you said, four months, five months turnover time. It's the Swift is not a, a heavy hitter, but. I think it would be worse to have no gas or to have high price gas than to have no gas and just let the product run out. The other question is at the end of the manager's contract, does he have to fill up with Swift gas? No. Well, I mean, the answer is he has to make a, a he, he has to an adjustment on that. He has to give the tanks back to what they were given. Right, so if we figure a dollar on that, we might be better off just fire sailing that Swift or trying to work with like Ryo Flying Club, unloading that Swift into their tank. We could move, I could move it out there for them and then we'd have the, that emptied out because Swift, you guys go through a tank, a, a thousand gallon tank out there less than a month, two months. So you guys go through twice the volume that Portage does. Might as well just send it out there work out a deal fuel's going up it's been going up every day so the gas that you have you paid less for it in that tank then you guys will pay for it in two months so we'll have the advantage to be able to sell it at a good price not take a loss then fill those tanks and we may have a few weeks that we don't have a hundred low lead put a put a notice out a notum or uh just i mean you can note a few of the locations and people won't be coming in you know with without knowing Bill. Is there any uh, possibility that we can uh, rent storage space at Crawford? For 100 low lead? Sure. I, it's, I doubt it. I mean, his big tanks are going to be, they never stored low lead at their facility before. They always went right down and used, filled one compartment, you know, in a five compartment great truck. They'd fill one compartment with a couple hundred gallons and bring it to you. Is that correct? I don't know how they got it. I just I'm pretty certain that so they Portage Airport was the only customer of a hundred low lead for Crawford. So they didn't have a, a tank. Yeah, that, they they sell to quite a few places, but they told me that the straight trucks aren't making any money. They can't make money with straight trucks. They might, like you say, have to go down McFarland and get it and then bring it back, but they have delivered it to uh, Watoma, Reedsburg, uh, Wanakee, and to other places. And sometimes these other guys get in a pinch. They don't so much like Baribu used to get it from Crawford when they were in a pinch, but now they got a 10, 12,000 gallon. Dennis. I, Adam, I, I'm just a little confused by what you said. If we sell whoever we sell that Swift to, then you said we'd be out of fuel for a while. Wouldn't we still have 100 low lead? Well, we're going to, he can't get any more 100 low lead now. Oh. And we got a couple of weeks tops of fuel left, and he's got four months of swift gas left. So if we can't buy more 100 low lead until he gets rid of the swift, if we don't change operations, we'll be out of it in 100 low lead in two weeks, and we won't be able to replace it for four months. If we get two loads a month in Shano, why couldn't we get it right away? 
Well, we could, but then someone's got to buy that gas and pay the full freight on half of the volume. It's going to cost so much that no one's going to buy it, and someone's going to have to take the loss on the gas. Because if you have gas, if you don't cost average it and you just have your first load of gas at, say you're costing it's $10 a gallon and everybody's selling it for 7 no one's ever going to buy your gas. So either you got to sell it and take a loss. There's interest in yeah, but no one's going to buy the gas. <laughs> I, I, so have have we already kind of cost averaged it out with Sean? I guess I'm a little lost here too. For example, kind of what what Dennis is saying. Um, if we were to empty out Swift, sell it to Rondo, and have that tank be empty. Then we're running out of our own 100 low lead now. Can't when Shano gets their next load? Can't we buy in for our portion that we want? But you are saying that. Yep. All right. Uh, makes sense to me. I, d I didn't think about selling <coughs> uh, the, the fuel Swift fuel to Ryle. Go ahead, Eric. I think too, um, and I don't think we're getting the horse before the cart, or the cart before the horse. Um, but I do think you're going to have to see what the next guy, the next FBO is going to want. Right. For example, if he has a flight school and he's using a lot of gas, he's going through a lot of gas, he might want more uh, low lead 100 and maybe he can get uh, piggyback with somebody. I, I don't know. What I'm just saying is I think they should have a little input. And this, the, what we decide tonight, um, obviously, we'll have some play in that next airport manager contract. Um, obviously, you know, if it has to be adjusted in the future, it has to be adjusted in the future. Um, so I, I think what we're talking about tonight is what we can do now, you know, at this point in time, and whether or not that takes place when you're here or you know, the next, you know, story. But we needed to get fuel tomorrow. What's the, what's the most advantageous? So, Adam. I think we're also not just contemplating the short term on the fuel, but also allowing some flexibility with the RFP so that manager isn't contractually required to carry Swift, because right now he would be, right? If yes. this same contract went forward. We need to adjust that, too. Which that contract is still going to be negotiable between, you know, the city, you know, commission, and whoever takes that. Right. So th there's no guarantee that this airport manager contract that you see in front of you tonight, different business models, that could be a totally different person than what we have. Eric. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to be clear on uh, the me not having to fill the fuel back up. Because that in my contract it doesn't say I have to fill it back up. I am responsible for the dollars. That's not what we're here to discuss. No, but I just wanted to clarify it because you guys were speaking on it. I just have to reconcile the fuel You're and correct. dollar amounts. You are correct. So the question before you go, David, the question for me is how can we get this idea, which sounds <clears throat> really good to me, how can we move that idea forward with Ryle? I mean Who's going to take the lead on this? How can we do this? Well, if I, if I okay. may, that would be between the airport manager and Rio because the fuel is is his. Okay. It's not this commission's. It's not the city's. Okay. He purchased the fuel. We get it. The city gets a a. Okay. So we would we would want Eric to make a contact and see if that's even a possibility of selling the Swift. How many gallons would you say are in the Swift yet? Like half, 400. You 400. But you can only pump it down. There's always like four inches in the bottom. Yep. And that's what we were talking about. In the about ballpark of 400 inches. gallons. Okay. I would say less than 400. Okay. That frame. So, Eric, can you do that? Can you reach out to Ryo and see if we can have a, a uh, agreeable plan to move that gas over? And, Adam, I, I think do you if think you have the means to do that? Is that what I'm hearing? Or did I misunderstand you? I can help with that, but 
Phil's, it's up to, it's his fuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just proposing, I'd helping him with an idea, but if he says, no, he doesn't want to do that. I don't see right. Right. Okay. David, did you have something? So I don't think we can, you know, we've had discussion. I don't think we can make any motions at this point. But it No, it, it would just be to suspend basically the language of his contract yes. uh, to allow for not have to offer swift fuel. Yeah, yes, yes. But, but we're going to be hurting for 100 low lead sooner than we want. So we have to solve this soon. We do not have to take action. Um, Possible action, so okay. It's something that we need to push forward. It's something that okay. Well, Eric, if you can do that, I would greatly appreciate. I'll get a hold that. of the manager over there and okay. see if they. You're not going to get any more swift fuel in in your time here no. as manager, okay? Because, like I said, I could just let it go, and in a month we'll still have swift. Yeah. I would just have to be compensated. You're not going to top that tank off with no. swift, okay? How yeah. soon be? Yeah. How soon before we get 100 fuel? Uh, that's what we're talking about. You know, we have to partner with somebody, and we don't have that partner yet. I mean, my my concern is, as we all know, in the last month, the, aer the airport has made some big strides going forward, huge strides going forward. I just think it would be a shame now that we've done that if the word gets out and all of a sudden our airport's out of fuel. I, I just think that's a that's a bad thing going forward, folks. That's a, that's a bad message to send out there that all this work we did, oh, and now, by the way, we don't have no fuel at our airport. <laughs> I, I just don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> Tim. Um, so I guess my question for Phil is, you said, do we have to, Take action, make a motion for suspending his the, the wording in his contract well, so, now. So what it, what it, we're kind of in a tricky scenario right now because Eric is reaching the end of his contract. Yeah. Um, in theory, Eric does have a 30-day correction period, so we wouldn't be amending his contract per se. Okay. It's more so making the commission aware of it. Okay, so um, we don't have to make a motion or no. anything now, like that. Now, the okay. new contract will reflect you know, what that decision is. Okay. You know, are we moving forward with both tanks being under low lead or are we looking to do something different? So, uh, but no, there's no formal <clears throat> need to amend his contract because in theory, if he defaults on his contract, unless he does that in the next I don't know, 15 days or so, um, he's, he will still be in that correction before his contract so to fill up this hundred low lead tank right now, if you want to fill it up tomorrow, other than the cost of the fuel, how much does it cost for a drop charge? I don't know what the new one will be, and that's what that's what uh, Adam was speaking about. Oh, forget about Shano. Forget it. you're going to call your supplier that you've always called in the past. That's Crawford, and they're no longer in business. They, 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 they no longer sense. sell it. Oh, so you can't even get it. Can't even get it from them. That's the that's the, that's the conundrum idea. that we're in. So we would have to contact Shano now to find out. I you, just, or somebody. You could you could or order somebody. you could order a you can order a truck, a full truck. You can order an eight thousand gallon tanker with eight hundred gallons and bring it up out of Chicago, and you're gonna pay the full freight for eight hundred gallons. It's gonna cost you probably eighteen hundred bucks just on the trucking. And then or a full truckload. For a full truckload. Probably. Number one, we can't use a full truckload. Right. right. Well, it's going to cost you 1800 bucks whether it's a full truckload or it's got one gallon or 8000 The freight cost is the same. For $1,800, we could get our tank filled. Plus the cost of fuel. Yeah. And if the, the smaller the draw, the more it costs. So if you partner with. For what the fuel costs. For the fuel costs. So if you get a bigger draw, you're going to have a lower. Cost. So we're never going to get a bigger draw than 800 gallons. Well, we can partner with somebody else, and now we can get an 8,000-gallon an 8, draw instead of an 800-gallon draw. Correct, right. but we can never get more than 800. No, but we would pay the 8,000-gallon 8, price. Until we have, just until we have two tanks. Well, my concern is is that 
more. Now we got sixteen hundred dollars. Yes. Do we bite the I, I'm just concerned that we ain't out of fuel. Do we bite the bullet? And maybe we have to eat some of that, you know, that freight cost that it's going to cost us. But at least we got fuel there to sell. But that but people even even sell. though we're talking about this, that would be his well, cost. Maybe he would have to eat the eat the cost. Well, <laughs> unless we because step it's, in. It's his could, could we? We would step in and say we're going to pay the freight cost. Could we uh, talk to the manager and ask the manager if he was able to sell his Swift and just give up his rights to selling fuel in the short term? Because at, at this point, you're not going to have fuel to sell. Other than the Swift that you have now, once you sell that 400 gallons, you aren't going to have any fuel to sell, right? No, Lola, I've got about three, 400 gallons of low lead, and I've got about three to 400 gallons of... That low lead's going to be gone in no time. Yes. So you'll have that 400 gallons. If you sold those 400 gallons, could you give up that tank space and let, you know, somebody else, the city, I don't, I'm not trying to spend the city's money, but somebody else buy that two tanks full of 100 low lead. And then it would not be my fuel. It wouldn't be your fuel. It would either be the city's fuel or it could be somebody else's fuel. And I'm just, I would do it. I would just buy the fuel. I would help partner with Shano to get those tanks full and then just in case the city can't do it, but then we'd have full tanks. You'd have all of your fuel sold. You guys reconcile however you want to reconcile that. And then we can move forward with having fuel in the tanks. Yeah, I don't think the problem is once we can fill both tanks, it's it's the interim until we can fill both tanks. Well, he may be able to sell, it may be possible we could get that that Swift tank emptied in a few weeks. And if, and if wow. Adam helps, it yeah, might that, be a couple of days. But, right. everything, but everything's in here. Well, I can happens, tell you, if you got 400 gallons, I have a spot, I have a tanker, we can, I have a small tank we can put it in now, get that Swift gone, and then order fuel. we can order 100 low lead. Get on the, I mean, but if you take me off the li liability or the obligation of the fuel, that's if you want to relinquish your right to self to be the exclusive seller of fuel at the airport. And I don't know how. That's up to staff to decide how they want to do that. Can I just add one more thing? Most airports, when they do the fuel, it's owned by the county or the city. In most cases, not always. Uh, some of them, and again, and that's, this goes back to the next guy. If he has an, a school and he buys the gas, he's going to be getting it at cost, plus the 1.5% fuel charge. But anyway, if he's going through a lot of fuel, that's going to make a difference to him. See whether he wants to own the fuel or if he or if the city should be owning the fuel. And I said that to Sean when I, in the last contract negotiation. I said, what if I leave? Because I said, I don't want the fuel. And then I said, what if I leave? The city's going to get the fuel anyway if there was nobody there. Yeah. We're starting to get off topic, but yeah, that that's, is relevant. Yeah, it's I think relevant. it is. I'd... And we don't have an answer for that. No, the, the answer to that would be we'd have to verify with our city attorney on what, what we could do. Um, as part of obviously our current contract with the airport manager, um, for all practical purposes, is is binding until October thirty first. Um, additionally, I, I know you can touch on it that the city would not be able to sell that fuel. If I remember correctly, you know, just prior experience with Park Falls Municipal Airport is I was always told that we can't sell it at a loss legally, whatever we pay for it municipality at least but i would have to verify that i don't know if anybody else has any info on that there is a minimum markup law might be a, it might be a set you can't because or else you'd be in competition with another business and right. if you were taking a loss you could essentially Big subsidize competition you know i think that's what it's about yeah i think i think that's actually a state law women got trouble that years ago because it, it, it works with gas stations too they can't mm -hmm. to be clear i don't want to sell gas at a loss but well, I, no, just, I, no, no. But I, I understand that there's a need to figure this out because there is an issue. And what you're saying makes sense. I mean, about Swift getting split load, freight charges, you know, all that. Well, and it, 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 it's just a bad case of timing because Crawford's is ending at this point. Eric is leaving in the next 60 days or so, less than 60 days. So all of these things in a perfect storm are not lining up. 
So we're going to have to make some decisions. And so I would recommend that we we have with this discussion. Did you have something to add, Tim? I'll let you finish. I would suggest that Eric, you go ahead and check with Ryan and just see about the feasibility of them taking the Swift. That could just move mountains if that could if you could work out something with them that you and they can agree to. If he wants to. Yeah. Are you interested in I, that? I'm I've always been interested in this airport and always try to do things in the best interest of the airport. So if they if the airport has the best interest in me getting rid of the fuel, I'm happy to do that. I, I, there's no, well, I'm not going to do it at a loss. I don't want to pay 1.5% and then take a loss on that as well. So if there's if there's concessions by everybody, then I'm willing to. And, and I don't know if we can wait until next month to make a decision on that. I mean, if we get the we'll information run. on that, can we wait another four weeks? We'll run out of fuel. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll run out of fuel. Can, can, yeah, you, yeah, that won't work. Can you can we can we make another meeting for like next week? Well, this is simple. He's got he's got the hundred low lead he can sell. That's not a problem. He's got the swift gas that he's gonna have a hard time selling. You have a dollar a month that you would want for it as of like today, right now. How much per gallon? It cost me six dollars and eleven cents per gallon. Would you sell that that food? Would you sell that to me? Six dollars eleven cents a gallon. Would you sell that to me tomorrow? Well, it, well plus probably a one and a half percent. Otherwise, correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's right. Well, See, the city could waive that, presumably. I mean, we could amend the contract to. In the, would the city would the city be inclined to waive that? That would be something that would probably have to go back to the council. So, yeah. About two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I don't want to get in a chasing. I don't think that we, meaning Phil, Michael, three of us, we have the authority to say that we can waive that. that. We would need to get that authority from the council. Now, that might be something we're interested in doing. Well, what? That isn't something that we can sit here and say, yeah, we can waive it. Probably address something, too. What it, what it comes down to is if Adam would be willing to do this at 6 11, he would buy it out, and then at the next city council meeting, they say we want our 1.5. Yep. Then he'd have to come up with the extra money. He'd, he'd I'll, have to I'll come up with check. I'll come up with the the, the, the one and a half percent. So then the next. Yeah, but if the city if the city says we're going to waive it, then it's a done deal. Okay. So if we do that six eleven, you get your Swift sold tomorrow. So the next thing is thirty-seven dollars. Yeah, I'll pay the one and a half percent. I'll pay thirty-seven bucks. That's what there. I think Dennis was getting at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So we, that being said, now we have filling those two tanks with gas. Um, where do we get that money? Not just the first batch, but as that fuel sells, because we could go to. I already spoke with the Shano man, the manager, and the city mayor. They're willing if, if you would reach out to them, say, hey, yes, we're gonna buy it. They're they're comfortable with that type of an agreement. How does that work? How do we how do we get the city to go buy gas or do we have to do that on a private level again? Well, until October thirty first, Eric would be the one. And you'd be inclined to do that, right? Because at at the end of the day, October thirty first, if both of those tanks are completely full we reconcile the difference, it might mean the city pays Eric the difference, or if they're lower than when he stepped in, he pays us the difference. So it really doesn't, October 31st is the date. We'll go out and we'll dip the tanks versus, you know, the records that we have of where those tanks are at. Um, it doesn't matter if they're higher than where they were when Eric started or lower. But until that date, the few so it would come down to Eric agreeing to, to sell, move the Swift, sell it, and then he would out, he'd out to all, agree to contact Nishano and bind, bind the surplus off a of load. Correct. So how can we make that decision before four weeks from now? We can't. Eric has to. Eric has to. Well, there's but, nothing in Eric's contract that says where he's got to buy the fuel. I'm sorry. 
There's nothing in their contract that says where he has to buy a fuel cell. Right. So if he can cut a deal with Shano this for Monday morning to, and we can empty them tanks and he agrees to buy that fuel for them, that's his fuel. I mean, it, it can really happen all that fast because it's Eric's fuel, it's not our fuel. But then again, I have holding costs for 30 days, 31 days or something. Well, but then you're going to get reimbursed for either from the city if you got more in there than you had when you started, or if you got less in there than when you started, then you got, you know. So, I mean, that all just, it's a 30 day window that it all works out. That works out exactly the same whether it stays, if you don't sell another ounce of fuel in the tanks as they stay, that all works out to be the same. The same. So, it's really, if you agree to do that, Phil can talk to Shano, and they agree to do that. Eric well, says he's going to buy the fuel, and he's going to buy that Friday. Let's just say, I say Monday morning, we can have a tank of fuel in here. Yeah, he, you wouldn't even have to talk to Phil. Phil wouldn't have to talk to Shano. No, Eric, Eric doesn't. Eric, Eric's the one buying the fuel. Eric's the one that ha will have to talk to Shano. Eric would talk to Shano. And just, but, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that contact. But I think that because we want this to be a long-term arrangement, Phil needs to be involved in that conversation also. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Not just Eric. I mean, and, and nothing against Eric. 30 well, days I, from I now, he's gone. And all of a sudden, we don't know what kind of yeah. arrangement he had with Shano. Phil needs to be involved in that to you, protect the city. You'd have to know when their next load would be That's coming. That's exactly. To just their next load might not be coming. This all work. Yeah. And he just passes it on to the next airport manager if we have the same fuel set up in his contract. But I mean, they can be all in the same room when they're talking to him, so they're all in the same. But Phil needs to be involved in that conversation. And you can be involved in it, Adam, because you're the contact person. Everybody can be involved in it. It just Phil has got to be involved. <laughs> yeah, he's, once you get the number, I don't need to be involved. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Do you what, agree with that, Phil? Yes. What do you think, Eric? Yeah, it's a, are you willing? Well, it's, it's about, uh, I don't know how many gallons, but 1,600 gallons. The, the multiply that by five. So that's, uh, 8,000. Or, or eight. 8,000 bucks. I got to write a check for 8,000 bucks on my way out. And I know I'll get reimbursed for it, but it's like, do I want to do that? Well, if you go back to the statement that you just said and you, that you've always had an interest in this airport and keeping this airport going, I would think so. I guess what I'm asking for you is, are you willing to make the call up to Shano yeah. as well? I think, I think if Adam is willing to work with me, I yeah. think we can get all of it work cool. Don't you, Adam? I see no issue, no reason why this wouldn't work. So okay. here, I, I think people are seeking an answer. <clears throat> me and Eric, you're going to be available tomorrow? Or are you going to be here? Are you normally in Portage tomorrow? I think we just need to sit down. Okay, Friday. Yes. I'll give you the information for. Okay. I'm committed to figuring this out because it's too complicated to talk at a commission meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's really simple because yeah. it's one business. It's just a business agreement. Like at the end of the day, we need. If, am I getting this right? Get rid of the Swift and get them filled with Lola. Right. Right. That's what we're. Okay. Doing. Yes. All right. Well, it, okay. there is a way to do something, and I just don't think. It's too complicated to talk about in a commission, I think, for it, it, somebody's just seeking action to get it done. Well, I've gotten the answers that I've wanted to hear. You know, I'm, I'm hearing Eric's willingness. I'm hearing Phil and Michael's willingness to look into this. I'm hearing Adam's willingness. I think we're going to get this done before we're running out of fuel. We just can't run out of fuel. We, and I agree with you, Dennis. Whatever it's going yeah. to take. Yep. I, we're, yep, yep. I'm going, sorry, but thank you. We will figure it out. This is not the first time I figured out airport fuel. So. Okay. 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 Let's move on. So do Number we, that was just hundred low. That was a lot easier. Do we need to have action on allowing both tanks? To you have that to makes sense to me. Can I have a motion for having both of our tanks filled with a hundred low lead? I have Tim. I'll make that motion. Okay. We have one. I'll second it. We have a second with Larry Clements. <laughs> okay, call is Adam. Are we gonna have discussion on that? Any further discussion? 
You've got Is one, any? two, three, four guys that know something about man, maybe Phil, I don't want to take you out of that. Uh and Eric, are you guys okay with that? Before I vote, I want to know yes. from the pilots. Yes. Are they okay with having just one hundred no lead out there at that area? Well, for now. With, with the option that we review it at a later date when we have more information, yes. Okay. Yes. For me. Till January. For me. Put it off till January. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Bad joke. Okay. okay. Any other comments, discussion? Eric. I've got a seven o'clock I got to go to and I have to drive. So my management's report, I think it's all in writing. I don't think anybody really needs me. I can, I'll provide it. Okay. Thank you so thank much. You, Eric. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you Friday sometime. So we have a motion and a second. Are we done with discussion? Okay, so roll call. Adam. All right. Tim. Aye. Bill. Aye. Dennis. Aye. David. Aye. I vote aye. Larry. Aye. Christopher. Aye. Okay, motion has carried. Moving on to number five, staff report. I'll let Phil take that. Yep, so I'll be quick. Um, Airport managers first, uh, request for proposals. Obviously with uh, airport manager Peterson's contract expiring at the end of October, uh, the city has issued an RFP for the new airport manager. Uh, the proposal deadline is set for September 29th at uh, 4.30 p.m. Um, please feel free to share this document with uh, who you may see fit that would like to apply. Um, this RFP was drafted from a previous version used uh, in combination of both John Poppy and Peterson's contracts um, and outlines minimum qualifications, which include five years similar experience and ability to respond to emergencies as needed. Additionally, a uh, section is required to be filled out, which outlines uh, some sort of business plan and the services to be provided by that airport manager. Um, as of today, we've had one individual that's shown interest and tends to <coughs> apply by, by the deadline. Uh, once applications are received, city staff as well as uh, airport commission chair will review applications and narrow down the pool uh, to bring those individuals in for interviews. Uh, interviews will consist of city administrator Bablick, um, myself, and chair <coughs> Barry. Any discussion, comments? No, I'm just thinking about this, but I, I'm okay with who's going to interview. I absolutely don't need to be involved in that. Okay. <laughs> um, next, we have uh, airport layout plan. Um, so in mid-August, the FAA confirmed that they had completed their initial review of the ALP uh, and provided comments back to the BOA. Uh, these <coughs> comments have been sent back to TKDA for remediation. TKDA has stated the comments are minor and they are amending the plan accordingly. Uh, one item that was commented on uh, with concern was regarding the future apron tie downs within the runway hold lines um, and the proposed runway threshold as our plan is to secure the BOA funding uh, without further delay. Any modifications uh, would occur at a later stage to not delay that funding process. Uh, we hope for an update from TKDA in the coming weeks for resubmittal. And, and TKDA has said that they are starting to work on it. Yes. Yes. Yep. I mean, so things are happening. Uh, petition package funding updates. Uh, the BOA confirmed receipt of the petition package submitted on July 8th. Uh, following their receipt, Brandon Benjamin, who is the airport system planner associated with the petition package, reached out requesting additional explanation of the need for um, three of the items that we submitted for, replacement and relocation of runway threshold lights, uh, relocation of fuel facility, and construction of taxiways and tie downs. Um, I have since responded to Mr. Benjamin's inquiry uh, stating the need to upgrade these items uh, are needed as they relate to safety and need to be replaced to uh, current and uh, current standards. Um, Brandon got back to me late last week indicating that the response is in order and will be of assistance in our application. Uh, we will keep the commission posted on any additional correspondence. Any questions or discussion? Okay. Moving on to number six, airport manager report. 
Yep. So, uh, like Eric stated, um, he provided his um, provided his August report a couple weeks ago. Um, City's done some painting out there. Uh, we gave notice that uh, Eric obviously gave us notice that he is not going to renew his contract. Um, and we are obviously moving forward with the RFP there. Um, and other questions on his report, please feel free to let us know. Uh, looks like there was 786 gallons pumped in August and running total for the year as Eric. 7,380. Any discussion? Moving on to number seven, future agenda items. So we have a couple carryovers, um, the pilot controlled radio lights. Um, I did want to point out that uh, we can continue keeping this on the agenda. Um, however, our budget constraints constraints for the 2024 year are going to uh, limit us in being able to do anything like that. Um, it's not something that we include in the petition package. Um, so if it were to be something to look into, we'd probably have to submit an, a, another package at that point. Um, we are looking at a 1.25% increase uh, from last year's budget. This year that's been set forth by the city's office. the line budget at that, at that regard. Um, so we'll bring uh, kind of a somewhat formal uh, proposal forward next month on that budget. Um, but we know that um, the city's finance committee is the, is the one that's going to be with it. Um, do, do we no. have any idea no. what the, what the No, um, but just noting that, you know, the electricians would be involved. Um, obviously, we're, we're looking at that. Dennis. These dollars that are available to us through entitlement, <clears throat> and I've heard from 1.2 to 1.5, whatever that number is, and some of it won't cost us anything. The most it would cost us is 5%. But from what I've read. So, and I'll take, it's 5%. So, and there's 1.5 million, <clears throat> it's $75,000 is what we would have to come up with. If we get that money in 2024, how long does it take for us to have to use that money? Good question. Um, we can certainly reach out to the BOA and determine what, uh, what that timeline would be. Because for budget purposes, we might want to put some money in our capital improvements budget to cover that cost. So in the event that we get it, we, we would most likely have to go in for um, an additional bond for those capital improvements outside of capital. At that point. Correct. But, but we'll have a capital improvements budget for bonding mm -hmm. that for budget purposes, kind of encompasses all of our bond, you know, for one number. <coughs> we would want to put that number in there. Unless we did another show. Unless we did another. But we, we don't want to tie our hands in 2024 because we didn't put nothing in the budget, is my concern. Correct. But now, we also don't want to borrow money. We don't want to borrow money when we ain't going to use it. You know, now maybe it's going to be. We apply for the entitlement funds in January and it's September when we get them. And, you know, maybe, maybe that pro we've never, I've never been involved in that. So maybe the process is that long and it don't make any difference, but if it, if it does make a difference and in the fact that we only have X amount of time to use them funds, we want to know that going into this budget, because when he says one and a half percent, I don't know what he's smoking because it ain't gonna be one and a half percent, I can tell you that right now. It's our budget is in terrible, terrible shape right now. There's gonna be big decisions that are gonna to have to be made within the city. So, but again, that's why I'm bringing that up now is so we know that going into that. Right. 
uh, and cap improvement part of the budget ain't gonna be the problem. <laughs> it's gonna be the other part. Believe me, I am well aware. Yeah. So anyway, just so you're aware of that. Bill, do you have any idea how long you know, we might sure, be able might, to use that fund I mean, before we have to use those funds. It might be a dead, uh, drop dead day. We can do a little research on that. But I, I think that the questions I've heard is you know, working on a three year horizon total, uh, which might be 30 months or it might be uh, 42 uh, in terms of when you take that down and how it's taken down. Probably some may come. Or some may come. We just need to find that out. Yeah. I think that's going to be a terrible scheduling issue. Yep. It's going to be a hard question because some of the money is doesn't have the fact. Yeah. And it may be that we can that can be shuffled it, to fit with your need. You know, if we have to pay five percent, that isn't a showstopper. I mean it's seventy five thousand dollars. If we had to pay five percent. So we put seventy five in the budget, we ended up only having to pay forty. Under fifty. Yeah, you know. When you take all them funds and you take what requires five percent, it was just under fifty thousand. Yeah. yeah, that's so, that's the assumption. I'm so you know, but like you say, I don't know when is I the hear deadline on that? from one point two million to one point five million. No, when's the deadline to get budget funds for twenty twenty four with the city? If we right now, if, we're working on that right now. The city approves our twenty twenty four operating capital plan uh, in November. The Tuesday before Thanksgiving is when we actually approve it. So how do we, is there, a, is there a possible way to get that 50,000 potential? It's the way you make it sound is if we ask for it, you have to take it and we might not even be able to. If we ask for the fifth, if we earmark 50,000 in a capital, in the capital budget, can we do that? And then if the money isn't available from the BOA and the FAA, not use that? We won't. That money, if we were to put it in our capital improvement budget, we won't actually go out for bonding until spring of 2024. April. Or April. And then from the time that we would pass our budget until April, if something come up that we didn't need that $50,000, we could take it back out. So we wouldn't have to borrow for so it. So capital is not a budget. Capital is not our general obligation. Budget. It's a plan. It's so can we get in that plan? What do we need to do to get into the 50000 into the plan so at least we can have the option? And the city council would still have the option, right? I mean. That's what he's, he's or, saying. He that's exactly what I'm saying. Do we have to do something to, to get there? Or is, oh, you. Can you do? Is that something? that capital improvement <laughs> budget together. Okay. Him and Michael. So will that be on there then, 50000 We can certainly request it. Um, obviously, that will then go through finance committee and through council, who can subsequently make cuts and. Um, so we would need. So then, is there public comment on that then, so we can have people show up and speak to that? Oh yeah, there is. But there is? Okay. Just, yep. Just hold off a little bit on that. <laughs> we, we don't need two hundred people. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> but getting getting back, getting, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Getting the capital improvements budget passed isn't a real big isn't a big deal, you, you, you know. I mean, it, overall, it is a big deal to the city, but it isn't like that comes with a lot of controversial. It's a it, it's just that it's a it's a plan. Right. We're not and I th I think with that pilot controlled lighting, things have changed since that was brought up. There's there's a much more comprehensive pilot controlled lighting system that can go in and probably you know with different lights and probably something that we're probably going to kick down the road for years potentially so it might be something we just kind of pull back right now because there's been a huge wreck berry i mean take that well, off the well, agenda well yes and and the fact of what phil said that even if we wanted to this is not in our proposition that we sent to the boa so we'd have to do a whole nother proposal is what i meant so it really isn't in consideration this point it's, so yes it's that fifty thousand dollars adam th th that would be sold to the council as that's if we get 1.2 million yeah or, yeah you know now yeah. Yeah. i can't imagine anybody voting against that fifty thousand dollars if we can get 1.2 million <laughs> yeah yeah and, you know. and we do have 
Um, we do have capital shown for the airport. That's right. Um, specifically for that 2021 and 2020 capital that doesn't have a match requirement to it. So there is, you know, earmarked value for that with the reciprocating, you know, money coming back in as revenue. Um, and that's typically how that funding will work. The city will have to front, you know, the money, whether it's, you know, uh, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know, available if it's without a match. Um, we would have to have that money available for probably borrowed. And then we would then get that reimbursement from the state to basically offset the cost. So there is money in the capital budget for the year. Yes. Yeah. It's just predicated on getting that funding. That, that's right. So, right. To give you an idea, I've been an alderman for eight years. Bill can contest to this. Every year that I was an alderman, we put $375,000 in the budget to put a new generator at City Hall. We did it this year. Eight years we carried that from item to item to item to item. And we did it. You bought it? Yeah, we bought the <laughs> generator. We finally can get that off the table. We bought the generator. So, so there's items like yeah. that every year, Adam. We, that we have $100,000 in the capital plan for the airport. Yeah. Already. It's, it's already in there. Can we increase that to 150 to cover what was there before? Because you're talking about funds that are there from 21 and 22 so that's an addition to what we need so are you saying that if we need the 21 22 and the 1.2 ish million that we need to go to 150,000 to cover all of that is that well i don't i don't think that we're going to be looking to, to use all 1.2 million dollars in 2022 yeah, okay. i know I see. I see. it's about a three-year program i got it okay so well, let's move along here folks um the pilot radio controlled lighting is really a non-issue right now. So let's move just, on to compost site improvements. I, I just got one thought on that. Sure. And and you might have answered it already. Correct me if I'm wrong. We're redoing the lighting on the runway. Can't we do the radio controlled lighting at the same time? Again. We, we're redoing the runway lighting with this proposed... We're not with, with the proposal that we sent to BOA That's, three months ago. Oh, it's I thought not, there was something with was lighting. It's not included in that. There is. A, it's a different component. Okay. So we can't add the radio controlled lighting in with that. Okay. I, I thought you answered that when you were. Yeah. But I just wanted to be clear. Yep. Uh, so my intention has always been to reach out to our uh, contractor for the West Conan Street 2 project to provide pricing for the modifications out at the compost site. Um, that's still what our plan is. Obviously they got a somewhat of a late start out on Conan street um, to where uh, it might be difficult them for them to complete those modifications this year. So we'll probably be looking. They'll have to come back in the spring though of 2024 anyway, won't they? Eight one. Yeah. So now you're talking the modifications, what we got to do in that ditch. That's that's the modifications yeah, you're talking about, yeah. But A1 will have to come back in the spring anyway. Well, they could do the ditch this fall, couldn't they? Depending on well, how if they have time. Yeah, they're not gonna pull off Conan. <laughs> well, no, no, but you know, they're not always. It's, Conan Street's a lot of different things. Is there a formal RFP on that? No, um, the the cost that we have allocated is actually less than our RFP threshold as a city, and that the funding has already been. So no, no, no. Can you use another contract, or does it have to be a one? We could use another contract. We use whoever we want. Have you, have you already talked to a one about it? No, not that specifically. You have a, do you have like specs for what you want you want done? Yeah, we have a plan, a grading plan. You'd have to probably have a survey. You can do that on Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah, I got a, I mean, I got a D6. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> I've seen him operate. <laughs> One thing about it is he won't be shy of any equipment. <laughs> so I'll take a look at if we can sure. get it done under budget even with these costs. Any One, other? The one thing, oh, go ahead. No. Anything else related to the compost? Any questions, comments? Yes. Okay. Well, the next meeting is set for October 18th. Can I have a motion for adjournment? Barry, can I add something to the future sure. agenda at this time, or do I just have to turn it into you to, to put it on the future agenda next time?
Okay. I just want to put a talking point on there because I didn't get it in there for this feeding. Um, just future plans for the airport. I have some ideas that I wanted to run past you guys and I'll have better better answers to my questions by then. So um and so we'll, you want to just put it on the next yep, just put uh, just a talking no action, just a talking point of okay. future plans for the airport. Okay. And then Go ahead. And also find a way to get a plan development to start streamlining how hangers get built. You you know hangers that are paid for by Companies, private individuals leasing space. I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. We've we've talked about that at great length. Um, that process includes the city's plan commission. Um, a, a proposal would need to be a proposed site plan. Um, that proposed building would need to be submitted to our director of planning. Plan commission then takes that up for uh, whether or not they would allow that to be built. So there's no way that to get that set up the way like you go to the Dells, you can have one built, you can be shovel ready in 30 days by just speaking with the mayor or not the mayor, the city or the airport manager. The way that our our system is set up, no. Okay. It has to go to both. Could we, let me, and, and this is, uh, uh, doing it really simply. Uh, if you look at Cleary or somebody like that, they sell hangers. And... We could do, uh, get somebody like Cleary, like Morton, to give us a plan for the, consistent with the AIP on what those look like, because they have some good looking hangers that are, so that it shows the commission exactly what we need to do. They could be built in increments, presumably, is the way Morton would do. They were gonna do five, give that to the commission. And then as they're sold, one, two, three, four, five, uh, sold or at least if, if, it's, if it's the uh, uh, pilot doing it, then those hangers could be built in accordance with that sort of what you might call a plan. Would the plan commission pre-approve designs so they can be kind of essentially rubber stamped? Because sometimes that plan commission can be- Maybe once a month, no different than this committee. So it'd be sort of like it's sort of like the way you do a uh, new development in the city, where where they're planning on putting in 20 houses or something like that. What I'm saying is, we <coughs> giving the plan commission a plan that will show you the 20, you know, how we're going to do the 20 houses. The biggest thing is that wouldn't come from us; that would be coming from the developer or whoever is going to be putting those hangers. Well, but we've got to approve them. See, our sense the plan commission has to. Well, no, but it, the commission too, because. We want, presumably, they've got to, they've got to fit with the AIP. Correct. Design is something that can be offered as a uh, plug and play, in effect, to the developer because they're going That would be the objective. Still need to come from the developer to. We're not, I believe, part of our ALP is all the new hangers that are listed on there are. Ground lease hangers. Ground lease hangers. What's the process? To, what does somebody start getting a hanger? Is it is it possible to start leasing that space? And you know, to, where does somebody go to do that? You would bring a building design. Much to Bill's point. You're absolutely right. You could get you know, Cleary to you know set up a, a plan for you. Bring it here. Bring it to the plan plan commission. commission. I'd say here first, and then the plan. Okay. The reason I'm saying here first is because my guess is that, that we only want uh, a certain look to the, to the uh, hangers and a certain style. Take it so it, it can come here, but that doesn't have any bearing over the approval process. The plan commission. Okay. The plan commission is where it goes. One at a time. Dennis. I, I think Phil. I think it. I think it needs to come from us first to recommend to the plan commission because this is just a little bit different than a regular development. You know, they own the land, they own everything. We, this commission, as he spoke tonight, we have control of that airport. And we're not going to let the plan commission 
from the developer to the plan commission make a decision that doesn't coincide with our master plan and everything else. Now you're there. I mean, it, it, oh, and that's that's you watch, but this commission before it goes to the plan commission has to work. That developer has to present that to us and let us critique it first before it goes to the plan commission because I would be there to vote against it at the plan or to, to encourage them to vote if we had no say so in the matter whatsoever. Okay, we need to make a Hold recommendation. On. David is next. Seventy four by seventy four is what we need, so we don't have that's to. gonna require an update to us. Because that's what that's the maximum you can have without fire suppression, I've under from my understanding. So we don't have city water. So seventy four by seventy four. I wanna do that. I'm trying to figure out how to make that happen. Where do I go? Do Chris, I get on the agenda? Chris, you had a question. Oh, I'm, you're good? Any other questions or comments? I'll make a motion we adjourn. I have a first. A second. I want to go to the We have a second. School. <laughs> okay. Uh, Aye. Let's see here. First, we start with Tim. Barry, Aye. You can just ask for a consensus. I on that adjourn. Do we have a consensus to adjourn? Aye. 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 All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you all.